tactics used by the Home Office to combat illegal immigration have come in for some criticism. It follows a wave of recent raids across the country which have led to the arrests of 139 people suspected of working illegally here in the UK. Live to our Westminster studio where we can speak to UKIP leader Nigel Farage. Um, hello Mr Farage, thank you for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Let's talk particularly and specifically about this van, should we? You feel that it's um, clearly aimed at encouraging people not to vote UKIP. How so? Yeah, I mean, the elections that we had back on May the 2nd this year for the English counties uh, saw UKIP go from almost nowhere to nearly a quarter of the vote. Uh, the coalition are acutely aware of that. So all these campaigns really have a big, strong message, which is don't vote UKIP. We intend to do something about it. Uh, but the other uh, subplot is that they're trying to show how tough they are to divert attention away from legal immigration to illegal immigration. Now, I don't for a moment say we haven't got a problem, and the estimates are that something like a million illegal immigrants are here in Britain, but it's legal immigration that has given us over four million people in the course of the last ten years, and it's legal immigration under EU rules that opens the door to the whole of Bulgaria and Romania from the 1st of January next year, and they want to do anything they can, the coalition, to deflect attention away from that. As far as the van is concerned, though, what about the message? What do you think of the message? Uh, well, I think it's uh, really uh, rather unpleasant, uh, not the way we should do things. And I ask myself a question. You know, if you were a member, uh, a legal member of the ethnic minorities in this country and you saw a van like that driving past, uh, what message does it send? And I don't think it sends a very nice, helpful or pleasant one. And I think they've made a mistake and I'm very surprised. Uh, given much of the reaction to this, that um, I'm now told they intend to roll this out across the whole country. Inciting racial hatred is what some suggest. What do you think? Uh, I'm not uh, sure uh, that it goes as far as that, uh, but I would say that it's deeply divisive and unnecessary. And really, you know, whether you put out poster trucks or whether you start rounding people up in the streets, as apparently has been happening over the course of the last week, uh, surely the point is, you know, we shouldn't be putting the cart before the horse. The first thing we've got to get right is we've got to get proper border controls right. We must count people in, we must count people out so that we know where we stand. And as the House of Commons Committee last week said, we don't do that and therefore even the figures we are working from are grossly inaccurate. So sort out the borders first. That should be the absolute priority. So you're not really in favour of these spot checks at railway stations either? Well, you know, spot checks um, and being demanded uh, to show your papers by officialdom are not the British way of doing things. Yes, of course, we want to deal with illegal immigration, but what's the point of rounding people up at railway stations if at the same time they're still flooding in through Dover um, and the other nearly 100 ports in this country? I think it's a very un-British way to deal with things that I'm astonished that the Home Office has become so politicised that they're actually advertising you know, another 10 arrested. I mean, before long, there'll be live video streaming uh, of these arrests. I don't like it. Uh, it really is not the way we've ever behaved or operated as a country. We don't have ID cards. We should not be stopped by officialdom uh, and, and, and have to prove who we are. But isn't it, uh, I suppose the other way of looking at it is that it's uh, sending a very strong, loud message to people who are here illegally or people who are considering coming here illegally that actually we will stop you, we will find you and we will send you home if you're not supposed to be here. Yeah, I understand that and, and, and I do think a message needs to be sent across the world uh, that we're not going to tolerate illegal immigration. But, you know, on the one hand we have the poster truck campaign and the rounding up in the streets. On the other, uh, we have the Lib Dems, Labour and people like Boris Johnson talking about mass amnesties for illegal immigrants. So I think at best they're very mixed messages and uh, really what's going on with this poster truck uh, is that Linton Crosby is trying to stiffen David Cameron's resolve. Uh, they're so scared of the immigration issue, they're so terrified of what the opening of the door to Romania and Bulgaria could do next year, particularly as far as the UKIP vote's concerned, uh, that this is a short-term method uh, of showing everybody how tough they are. But it, it, it doesn't ring true with the rest of their actions. But with respect, so you can't claim the immigration immigration issue as your own, can you? It's going to be one of the major planks uh, for the next election. The only way we can have control over who comes to live, work and settle in Britain, indeed who comes here to claim benefit, um, and whether we can deport people uh, such as that Polish man uh, who, was, who has now been, um, has, has now been you know, convicted 
um, effectively of murdering that four-year-old boy, and yet we can't deport him. Why? Because with all of these things, if you're a member of the European Union, there is nothing you can do. And therefore, when it comes to the Romanian-Bulgarian debate, the only party with anything sensible to say in this country is UKIP. And what we would say is, we're very happy to have work permits for Bulgarians and Romanians. We are not happy to have open borders. We are most certainly not happy to open our doors to our social security system. And we do not want, from January next year, Romanian criminal gangs coming to London in significant numbers. And the other parties are hiding under the carpet and pretending this debate isn't happening because under EU rules, there is nothing they can do. Well, uh, um, with, with the reason that we can't deport uh, Kresilek, uh, the gentleman that you're, well, I'm not going to call him a gentleman, but the man that you're talking about responsible for the murder of Daniel Pelko is because he's perfectly entitled to be here. That's not what the issue is. Is really, is it? No, no. I, I'm sorry. We should be able, if we wish, to deport people who have committed criminal offences in this country. In the case of this man, he served three prison sentences. There have been six separate incidences where the police have stopped him, arrested him uh, for assault, um, and we cannot deport him because under European Union rules, we can only get rid of somebody if they pose a threat to national security, namely, they are a terrorist. Uh, and it's, a, once again, a classic example of the sheer impotence of the British government because we're part of a, a European Union that has now extended its boundaries to a whole group of countries whose citizens are very much poorer than we are. OK, just while we've got you, um, you've got the hump over the uh, latest intake into the House of Lords, haven't you? Well, you know, whether it's corrupt or not, I'll leave others to judge, but it gives the appearance of being corrupt. It looks like you can now buy peerages. Uh, and all of this from a Prime Minister who said he wanted the House of Lords to represent how people voted in this country. Well, in the last big national test, in the elections on May the 2nd in the English counties, UKIP got nearly 25% of the vote. Last night, in an election to the Welsh Assembly, we got from nothing 14% of the vote. Uh, just what percentage, Mr Cameron, does UKIP have to get to get some representation in the House of Lords? Would you like to be a Lord? Uh, well, no, I'm an MEP at the moment and looking forward to fighting a European election campaign next year. Uh, this is not personal, but it is frankly farcical for the three old parties to treat the House of Lords as effectively a private members club for the closed shop that is Westminster politics. And they better wake up because things are changing. OK, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it as always. Thank you.